Here's a quick little demo of what we're about to build. We have a web hook in N8N. It is waiting for the trigger event. I just test workflow. We're going to send some data to it. We're going to ask it to describe quantum physics in two sentences. It's going to send that off to the Olam API. Once the, all the fields come back, it's going to clean up and just take just the request field. And uh, in our case, for the demo, we're going to post that over to a Discord webhook. We should see this going. It's querying the API right now. Once that comes back, uh, it'll step through these pretty quick. And there you have it. So in this video, I'll show you exactly how to connect your N8N to a running local instance of Olama, as well as post to a webhook like we've shown in the demo. This will let you integrate powerful large language models directly into your automated workflow for tasks like summarization, content generation, data analysis, and more all while running locally. So what I'd like to do right now is just kind of gloss over the prerequisites and kind of go over what we're going to do. Uh, so here is what we're looking at. We have prerequisites. We'll, uh, we'll check into the Olama API basics. Uh, we'll talk about the N8N HTTP request setup. We'll run the workflow. We'll use the response. Then we'll upgrade the workflow. The first one we'll do is just uh, send static data. We'll upgrade the workflow to use uh, Dynamic, which you saw in the uh, demo, and we'll post it using an external webhook to a Discord in our case. At a high level, this is what's happening. We're using N8N to trigger HTTP web request. It will post to the API, the Llama API, which will use the, in our case, the Quinn 3.6 billion parameter model. The Olama will then send that response back, which N8N will capture into the workflow. All right, and just to check in on Olama itself, let's open up the terminal. We're going to run the uh, Quinn 3 model that we're using here. It's going to think and pretty quickly. The reason why I chose the small model is it's actually kind of quick on this particular demo. So let's take a minute and dive into the Olam API. To do that, you'll want to hit the API at 11434 by default. There's no authentication, so uh, that'll also come up again when we're actually building the workflow. For the body, we will send JSON a load. We're going to send it this, where you're saying the model that you're that you're currently querying. If you have more models, as long as you have the models here, uh, it should uh, use it. If it does, if you don't have that model, it'll complain. We're going to give it the prompt that we want, and then a, a direction to send it to stream false, because uh, we're asking it to process the whole prompt and then send back the entire response at once. This is much easier to handle in, in ADN for a basic setup. If it was true, Olama would send back the tokens piece by piece. Before we hit send, we need to post. It's actually sending it off to Olama in the background and sends us back this response. Quinn does a think. We need to trim that off for the actual response. I'm not going to handle that here in this video. So what let's do, let's hop over to N8N here and we can we'll save that. We'll jump out here. Well, let's delete this one. Yes, yeah, delete it. So this is N8N. Basically a fresh install. We'll do a trigger manually for now. Come out here. We are going to add a HTTP request. So we're going to make a HTTP request. And I'm going to fill these out and then we'll go over them. We have method, post, URL. We're going to pass the host.docker.internal since N8N is running in Docker, but Olama is not. You, you would typically pass localhost here, but in our case, since N8N is in Docker, this is what we do. We're going to send the headers across, content type, app case, JSON. We're going to send the body. In this case, we're just going to do a static payload right now. We will upgrade this very shortly here to a dynamic version. We'll hit test setup, test it, and it looks good. There's a couple of ways to see the data that came back. This is a schema. We'll, be, we'll actually use this field uh, on the left tab on the left here in a minute. Uh, this kind of parses it to a table. JSON, this is what we're after. We want the response field, and it contains the text generated by the language model. So now let's go grab a set node. This will allow us to edit the field, to basically just peel off the field that we care about. We're in the manual mapping mode. By default, we'll drag in that response, and when you hit test setup, is isolated this response field out for us. So now we have a clean response ready for use. All right, so there we go. Now we can look at making this dynamic. In order to boys in the background. They're going to raid my office in a second. All right, so what we want to do, okay, what I want to do now is turn this into a dynamic workflow. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and I want to make that a webhook. My son just busts in the room. He's wearing half a Spider-Man outfit and half a Batman outfit. <laughs> so let's change this up. Delete this. Let's get rid of that. Add a workflow webhook. And 
Uh, it'll generate a URL for us, which is cool. To get it started, we'll just we'll start with the git method, but we'll quickly change that. Let's go ahead and listen for it. One click copy is, is nice. We'll open up Insomnia. We'll do a new request here. We'll do a git on that URL. So paste it. And once you send it, you can see that we, we were able to capture that. So let's close that for now. And we're going to tie it up to this one, all right? So now just triggering that will actually trigger this whole workflow. Let's do that again. So click test, open Insomnia here, trigger it, put it back over here. And as you can see, it's gonna run through. Done. However, it's using the static data here. So let's upgrade this to work with uh, an expression in, in our case. Paste that in. Make sure you're running the correct model here. So we're doing plan three, zero point up. Okay, so this is going to pull off and we'll see this in a second. We'll, we're going to pass the prompt text and then it's just, we, we do have a default clause in there basically. That's what the uh, double pipe is doing. Now it's gonna show red here because it does not see anywhere in the body that there's a prompt text uh, and that's okay. Once we open this up, let's do a new request. Uh, let's get our, so this is our webhook. Let's just use it. So we're gonna upgrade this. We're gonna do a post. We're gonna do a body of JSON. And like we showed, we're gonna do a prompt text. And then we're gonna pass it a single sentence about the size of the earth. There you go. So when we hit send now, uh, it's not listen. Uh, so let's get back over here. This is gonna stay red for a second. So let's get out of here. We need to go back here. We see this git. Let's go edit that. I'm just double clicking on that. So let's stop listening. Uh, for the HTTP method, let's go to post and listen. So now when we hit send, we should get it started. And then this one, let's go look at this one. If you ever have trouble with that. So we have prompt text here, but we're not seeing it uh, work here. So let's just, or the reason why it wasn't working is we need to, when you when you do this, you're looking for expression. That way it can parse that out. So now it can see the prompt text. When you test it, it should come through now. So now you're passing dynamic data on between the universes of S infinite billboard. All right, so uh, once, you, once you get this one, our results should contain just, uh, it does contain this whole thing, but the only one we're really interested in is that one. Depending on the model that you're using, we'll, we'll send back different data. Okay, so at this stage, you have a webhook that you can pass data to, that data gets passed off to the Olama API, comes back, we clean it up where we only have that one response. And you can use that in something like Google Sheets, send them to Slack, use them to generate emails, whatever. In our case for the demo, we'll go on and I'll open up Discord here. Let's delete this one real quick. We'll go to our server settings, integrations. So this is typically how you do webhooks, Teams, Slack, and stuff like that. They're all, they're all gonna have their way of doing webhooks like this. We'll create a webhook, open it up. We're gonna copy the URL. You can name it. I'm not really worried about that right now. We're gonna close it. We're gonna come back to N8N. We're going to add a new node, HTTP request. We're gonna add this one in. We're gonna do a post to the Discord webhook. URL or, or he headers, let's throw in, there you go. We'll do a send body. And in our case, instead of specifying the actual JSON, we'll just do content and we can map this response here. So it's going to send this off to that Discord webhook. All right, so from here, let's just hit test. We should watch Discord here. We'll come back to it. Let's just close out of this one. Let's pull up Insomnia and Discord. All right, so to test this, let's hit test workflow. We're going to pass it a single sentence about Discord, and then we're going to send this off. So it's triggering the workflow, it's asking Olama Quinn, and then it gets sent to Discord. So that's the end of this demo. I hope that was informative. We successfully connected N8N to Olama using the HTTP request node. We sent a prompt, extracted the LLM's response right into the workflow, and then we also demoed that on an actual use case, which was posting it to Discord webhook. Really appreciate you sticking around to watch this. If you found it helpful, please like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what other N8N or local AI integrations you'd like to see.